According to Reuters, New Zealand Prime Minister-elect Christopher Luxon will not attend APEC in San Francisco and instead the country's caretaker trade minister will represent the country, the political parties confirmed on Tuesday. A spokesperson for the caretaker government said Damien O'Connor, who remains the country's trade minister until a new government is sworn in, will attend the APEC meeting on behalf of the government this week. According to Reuters, corporate action to decarbonize is slowing and large listed companies are now on course to breach the emissions limit needed to keep global temperature rises below 1.5 degrees Celsius by April 2026, MSCI's net zero tracker showed on Tuesday. MSCI, an index provider and data firm, based its findings on an analysis of nearly 4,500 listed companies based in the group of 20 major economies. According to Reuters, Indonesian state oil company Pertamina signed agreements with U.S. oil company Chevron to share data aimed at developing a carbon capture facility in East Kalimantan, Pertamina said in a statement on Tuesday. Pertamina, through three of its upstream units, agreed to share information with Chevron on areas where they could potentially develop carbon capture storage or carbon capture utilization and storage, according to the statement. According to Bloomberg, Make Metals International Company, once one of the most powerful traders in China's massive copper market, filed for bankruptcy after more than a year of debt struggles. The firm founded by entrepreneur He Jinbi in the early 1990s was until recently responsible for more than a quarter of China's copper imports. On Monday, Make said the Intermediate People's Court of Xi'an accepted its filing, a step toward a final ruling by the court to wind up the company. According to Bloomberg, most Asian stocks gained before U.S. inflation figures that are forecast to cement the notion that global interest rates are peaking. Mischi's gauge of regional equities headed for its biggest advance in a week, with South Korea's shares leading gains. Benchmarks in Japan and Australia also rose. The SP500 ticked lower Monday but still held above the key 4,400 mark. According to Reuters, the Bank of Japan is expected to end its negative interest rate policy in April and keep raising short-term borrowing costs next year on heightening prospects of sustained wage growth, its former top economist Hideo Hayakawa said on Tuesday. With inflation already exceeding the BOJ's 2% target for more than a year, the central bank tweaked yield curve control in October to allow long-term rates to rise more, a move seen by markets as a step toward phasing out its huge stimulus. According to Reuters, Japanese government bond yields declined on Tuesday, with buyers gaining confidence from strong demand at an auction of five-year notes against a quiet U.S. Treasury market backdrop. The 10-year JGB yield fell one basis point to 0.86% as of 0420 GMT, doubling its decline following the auction result announcement. According to Reuters, Trucks and sport utility vehicles with hood heights greater than 40 inches are about 45% more likely to cause fatalities in pedestrian crashes than shorter vehicles with sloped hoods, according to new research from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. Prior studies have shown SUVs and pickups are linked to higher fatality risks in pedestrian crashes. But the new study focused on the risks posed by vehicles with hoods taller than 40 inches using data from nearly 18,000 crashes. According to Reuters, electric vehicle sales are seeing continued strength globally with China reporting record monthly sales in October despite the end of subsidies, according to market research firm Ro Motion. China ended an 11-year subsidy scheme for EV purchases in 2022, but some local authorities have continued to offer aid or tax rebates to attract investments as well as subsidies for consumers. According to Reuters, Egypt Air is close to announcing a deal to buy around 10 Airbus A350s, according to sources familiar with the matter. The deal could be announced as soon as Tuesday morning at the Dubai Air Show, the sources said, declining to be identified as they were not authorized to discuss the matter publicly. According to Reuters, pension fund Australian Super has increased its stake in Origin Energy to 16.50%, the Australian power producer said in an exchange filing on Tuesday. The stake increase by Australian Super, Origin Energy's top shareholder, threatens to scupper a $10.5 billion buyout of Australia's largest energy retailer. According to Reuters, China's securities watchdog has asked Sinau, the logistics arm of Alibaba Group, 
to submit additional information about its shareholders and operational structure as the unit seek to list in Hong Kong. The China Securities Regulatory Commission also asked Sinao to describe its business dependency on Alibaba and provide details of spin-off plans by Alibaba's other businesses, according to a filing dated November 10 which was reported by Chinese media on Tuesday. According to Bloomberg, Tech Resources Limited is in advanced talks to sell its coal business to Glencore PLC in a deal that would value the business at roughly $10 billion, the Wall Street Journal reported. An agreement could be announced as soon as this week, the newspaper said, citing people familiar with the matter. Tech and Glencore didn't immediately respond to requests for comment from Bloomberg. According to Reuters, a new Australian law will toughen restrictions on how industries and universities share defence technology with foreigners, while exempting a UK-US partners Britain and the United States from such controls, a draft of the measure shows. The law is meant to replicate US export controls to defence technology, seen as a key step to beginning the AUK-US plan to build a new class of nuclear-powered submarine in Australia and Britain. According to Bloomberg, Copper paired Monday's biggest advance in a month as some top executives from the global industry prepared to discuss the metal's outlook at an event in Shanghai. Asia Copper Week is getting into FLL swing in China's commodities hub, against a mixed backdrop of strong demand growth in the country, continued pressure from tight monetary policy in the rest of the world, and uncertainty over the outlook for global supply. According to Reuters, Emirates airline president Tim Clark on Tuesday ruled out an immediate deal to buy Airbus A350 jets barring a breakthrough on engine talks with Rolls-Royce. Speaking to reporters a day after placing a large order for rival Boeing 777X jets, Clark said Emirates wanted improvements on durability and maintenance costs. According to Reuters, merger and acquisition activity in the global healthcare sector should continue to rise next year led by healthcare companies rather than private equity, according to a survey of industry executives. The report, published by investment bank Jefferies on Tuesday, surveyed 600 senior leaders in the sector. It found 68% of respondents expected the volume of deals in healthcare to rise in 2024, with 60% believing companies within the sector will dominate the transactions. According to Reuters, Unicredit chief executive Andrea Orsel struck a defiant tone when his bank recently topped profit forecasts for an 11th consecutive quarter. Investors who trusted the former Merrill Lynch and UBS banker and bought Unicredit's shares on his arrival in April 2021 are so far sitting on a 190% return. They have also pocketed 9 billion euros in buybacks and, to a lesser extent, dividends, with at least another 6.5 billion to come. According to Reuters, the auto industry's drive to make electric vehicle motors with little to no rare earth content has hit high gear, with European, US and Japanese automakers and suppliers racing for alternatives in an area dominated by China. Automakers have mostly relied on motors with rare earth-based permanent magnets, which have been the most efficient at providing the torque to power EVs. According to Reuters, Bitcoin miners are making hay while the sun shines. The business has been yanked out of the doldrums by the cryptocurrency's recent rally, and now mining companies are racing to lock in profits before bitcoins, having, when rewards for producing the tokens are cut in half. According to Reuters, a growing number of automakers and suppliers are working on electric vehicle motors that either do not contain rare earths or dramatically reduce the use of materials that are dominated by China. Here is a list of some of the products automakers and suppliers are working on or have completed as part of this process. According to Reuters, RWE, Germany's top utility, on Tuesday posted an 82% increase in core profit for the first nine months, lifted by the group's commodity trading business as well as higher margins for its gas-fired power plants. The group also confirmed its outlook still expecting adjusted EBITDA of 7.1 billion to 7.7 .7 billion euros and adjusted net income of 3.3 billion to 3.8 billion. According to Reuters, if Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida meets Chinese President Xi Jinping for the first time in a year later this week, he will likely raise the case of a detained company executive that has dealt an outsized blow to their close economic ties. The employee of drugmaker Estella's Pharma, as well as other Japanese imprisoned or under criminal probes in China, 
will probably be among the topics to be discussed as plans take shape for the leaders to talk on the sidelines of the APEC summit in San Francisco, sources familiar with the planning said. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average ended higher on Tuesday amid expectations that domestic firms would continue posting solid outlook, with the yen hovering near a three-decade low against the dollar. The Nikkei rose 0.34% to close at 32,695.93, while the broader Topix gained 0.37% to 2,345.29. According to Reuters, State-controlled power group EDF and the French government have reached an agreement on future nuclear power prices, industry minister Roland Lesquier said, adding the deal would be sealed with the company on Tuesday morning. Reuters on Monday reported the two sides agreed on €70 Euros per megawatt hour as a reference level for power prices. According to Reuters, Apple Inc. supplier Foxconn reported on Tuesday a surprise 11% increase in third-quarter profit, boosted by strong demand for smart consumer electronics ahead of the year-end holiday shopping season in Western markets. The Taiwanese company, the world's largest contract electronics maker, said net profit for the July to September quarter rose to 43.1 billion Tongan Pawangas from 38.8 billion Tongan Pawangas in the same period the previous year. According to Reuters, the Russian ruble strengthened to a 3 minus one half month high against the dollar in early trade on Tuesday buoyed by exporters' foreign currency sales, high interest rates and recovering oil prices. At 0621 GMT, the ruble was 0.1% stronger against the dollar at 91.52, earlier hitting 91.4600, its strongest point since August 1. According to Reuters, Indonesia's Coordinating Ministry for Maritime and Investment Affairs has signed an initial agreement with ExxonMobil to explore potential investment in a petrochemical project in the country, the ministry said in a statement. The potential project is expected to produce polymer and may utilize carbon storage facility Exxon is currently reviewing with state oil company Pertamina, it said. According to Bloomberg, key iPhone assembler Hun Hai Precision Industry Company reported stronger than expected profit suggesting demand for Apple Inc.'s signature devices proved better than feared. Net income in the September quarter came to 43.13 billion new Taiwan dollars, compared to the average analyst estimate of 34 billion new Taiwan dollars. Apple's latest iPhone, released in September, sparked an upgrade cycle among owners of older iPhones in the US, though it has fallen shy of its predecessor in China. According to Reuters, Japan's Kioxia on Tuesday reported a 100.8 billion yen operating loss in the second quarter as earnings were hit by a slump in demand for memory chips used in smartphones and personal computers. The result at Bain Capital-backed Kioxia, formerly Toshiba Memory, compares with a loss of 130.8 billion yen three months earlier. According to Bloomberg, Bearings LLC is preparing to launch an Australian private credit fund, seeking to provide an alternative funding source beyond banks in the bond market, an executive at the investment company said. The fund hopes to raise 1.4 billion Australian dollars from institutional and high net worth investors in the next 12 to 18 months that will be lent to Australian corporate borrowers, Shane Forster, head of the firm's Asia-Pacific Private Finance Group in Hong Kong, said in an interview. According to Reuters, Asian shares edged higher on Tuesday ahead of a crucial U.S. inflation report that could heavily influence the Federal Reserve's policy outlook, while the fragile yen flirted with 33-year lows, putting it back in the intervention zone. Mischi's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan was 0.23% higher, on course for its second straight day of gains. According to Bloomberg, oil rose for a fourth day, the longest run of gains in over two months, on signs the demand outlook may not be as bad as previously feared. Global benchmark Brent traded near $83 a barrel, and is up around 4% since Wednesday's close. West Texas Intermediate was close to $78. Demand is robust, and overblown negative sentiment has been dominating the market, OPEC said in a report on Monday. The American Automobile Association said the U.S. Thanksgiving travel period will be the busiest since 2019. According to Bloomberg, yen traders are bracing for U.S. inflation data later Tuesday as a potential trigger to push the currency to a 33-year low and draw Japanese authorities into the market. 
It is already trading at levels that saw intervention last year and on Monday came within a whisker of breaching the key 151.95 threshold versus the dollar. Japanese Finance Minister Shunichi Suzuki has warned repeatedly this week that excessive moves are undesirable and the government will respond as needed. According to Reuters, Bahrain-based alternative asset manager InvestCorp is aiming to raise 2 billion to 4 billion yuan for its first private equity fund in the Chinese currency, its executive said, to explore buyout opportunities in the country. InvestCorp plans to apply in the next few months for a license with Chinese regulatory bodies that will allow it to start raising funds from domestic institutions next year, InvestCorp's co-chief executive officer Hazem Ben Gassim said. According to Reuters, British telecoms group BT said on Tuesday its pension funding deficit had been valued at £3.7 billion, down from £8 billion in 2020, and its annual contribution amounts would remain unchanged. Under the plan BT will pay £600 million in each financial year until 2030, plus £180 million under an asset-backed funding arrangement. According to Reuters, China's central bank is widely expected to boost its liquidity injections but keep the interest rate unchanged when it rolls over maturing medium-term policy loans on Wednesday, a Reuters survey showed. While parts of China's economy are starting to show signs of improvement after a mid-year slump, the property market and exports continue to contract. However, markets believe sustained downward pressure on the yuan currency is limiting room for policymakers for more aggressive monetary easing. According to Bloomberg, Glencore PLC agreed to buy a majority stake in Tech Resources Limited's coal business for $6.93 billion, ending a months-long saga and setting the stage for the commodity giant to spin off its own coal unit. Glencore will own 77%, and steelmakers Nippon Steel Corp and POSCO will hold the remainder of the business, the companies said in statements Tuesday. The deal implies an enterprise value of $9 billion for Tech's coal business. According to Reuters, a South Korean court has granted bail to a former executive of Samsung Electronics accused of stealing sensitive information developed by the technology giant, court records showed on Tuesday. In a case that underscores the country's efforts to crack down on industrial espionage, prosecutors have alleged that the former executive Choi Jinzyog, a South Korean chip expert, stole information formulated by the world's top memory chip maker to help his client set up a chip factory in China. According to Bloomberg, UK wage growth slowed and vacancies continued to fall, further signs that the labour market is easing as the British economy flirts with recession. Average earnings excluding bonuses rose 7.7% in the three months through September, compared with a revised 7.9% in the period through August, the Office for National Statistics said Tuesday. Private sector regular pay growth slowed to 7.8% from 8.1%. According to Bloomberg, European stocks will rise next year as household spending power picks up and the threat of a sharp slowdown eases, according to Goldman Sachs Group Inc. strategists. Quicker than expected cooling in euro area inflation should lead to positive growth in real wages, a boost for consumers, while also reducing obstacles to interest rate cuts and with that the risk of a deep recession, the team led by Sharon Bell wrote in a note. According to Bloomberg, Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group Inc. announced a $2.6 billion share buyback after profit jumped in the second quarter. Net income tripled from a year earlier to 368.9 billion yen in the three months ended September 30, according to calculations by Bloomberg based on six-month results released by Japan's biggest bank on Tuesday. According to Reuters, China has ordered its local governments to halt public-private partnership projects identified as problematic and replaced a 10% budget spending allowance for these ventures with a vetting mechanism by Beijing as it tries to curb municipal debt risks. The guidelines were mentioned in a cabinet document that was circulated among local governments, policy banks and state lenders last month, said the two sources with knowledge of the matter. The latest guidelines have not been reported previously. According to Reuters, Japanese chip foundry venture Rapidus plans to open a sales office in the United States by the end of the financial year. Rapidus is led by veteran chip executives and hopes to manufacture cutting-edge chips by partnering with IBM and Belgium-based research organization IMEC.
According to Reuters, the Russian ruble firmed to a 3 minus one half month high against the dollar in early trade on Tuesday, buoyed by exporters' foreign currency sales, high interest rates and recovering oil prices. By 0819 GMT, the ruble was 0.2% stronger against the dollar at 91.44, earlier hitting 91.3100, its strongest point since July 31. According to Bloomberg, India's inflation eased for a third straight month in October, although it's likely to bring only temporary relief to policymakers still worried about rising food costs before elections. The Consumer Price Index rose 4.87% from a year earlier, Statistics Ministry data showed Monday, down from 5.02% in September, but slightly higher than economists had estimated. According to Bloomberg, the European Union is discussing the possibility of temporarily prolonging a truce with the US related to steel and aluminum trade, a prospect that would bypass stalled negotiations and avoid the return of tariffs on as much as $10 billion of transatlantic exports. Since the tariffs return automatically at the end of the year, an extension would provide more time to reach a permanent settlement before the US presidential election in 2024, according to people familiar with the bloc's thinking. According to Reuters, Google was fined 15 million rubles on Tuesday for repeated refusal to store Russian users' data on servers inside Russia, a Moscow court said. Russia has repeatedly clashed with foreign technology companies over content, censorship, data and local representation in a simmering dispute that intensified after Moscow sent its armed forces into Ukraine in February 2022. According to Bloomberg, the situation at two Gaza hospitals is under focus as Israel and Hamas trade accusations over the facilities and President Joe Biden called on Israel to take less intrusive action at the Al-Shifa hospital, the latest sign the U.S. wants fewer civilian casualties. Israel's forces are pressing on with their ground offensive in northern Gaza against Hamas, designated a terrorist organization by the U.S. and European Union, while Hezbollah and Israeli troops traded fire again over the Lebanese border. According to Reuters, the Swiss National Bank will monitor the development of inflation closely in the coming weeks ahead of its next meeting in December, Chairman Thomas Jordan said on Tuesday. We emphasized that price stability may not yet be ensured. Thus, we will not hesitate to tighten monetary policy further if necessary, Jordan said at a central bank conference in Zurich. According to Reuters, Eurozone government bond yields struggled for direction on Tuesday as investors await U.S. inflation data, which could affect the Federal Reserve policy outlook. Analysts said euro-area borrowing costs would keep tracking U.S. Treasury yields, while remarks from European Central Bank officials pushing against expectations for rate cuts offset the impact of a bleak economic outlook in the bloc. According to Reuters, Russia has signed a contract to supply IGLA's handheld anti-aircraft missiles to India and allow production of the IGLA there under license, the Russian state news agency TASS quoted a top arms export official as saying on Tuesday. The IGLA-S is a man-portable air defense system that can be fired by an individual or crew to bring down an enemy aircraft. According to Bloomberg, Moody's Investor Service has backed itself into a corner by placing Italy on the brink of being branded as junk according to a former leading sovereign analyst. Moritz Kremer, who spent 17 years at SP Global Ratings, including as its global chief rating officer for sovereign ratings, doubts that the company that used to be his biggest rival will cut below investment grade. Moody's has scheduled a potential update on the country for Friday. According to Bloomberg, global oil markets won't be as tight as expected this quarter as upward revisions to demand are outpaced by upgrades to supplies, the International Energy Agency said. The IEA boosted forecasts for world fuel consumption this year on surprising strength in China, and still anticipates a supply shortfall during the fourth quarter. But it will be roughly 30% smaller than previously projected, at about 900,000 barrels a day. According to Reuters, the European Union will miss its target of supplying Ukraine with 1 million artillery shells and missiles by next March, German Defence Minister Boris Pistorius said on Tuesday. Arriving at a meeting of EU defence ministers in Brussels, Pistorius also questioned the wisdom of having set the target in March this year, with a 12-month deadline. According to Reuters, Microsoft and Alphabet's Google will not challenge an EU law that would require them to make it easier for people to move between competing services, 
such as social media platforms and internet browsers, the companies said. In September, the European Union picked out 22 gatekeeper services, run by six of the biggest tech companies in the world, to face new rules as part of its latest crackdown on big tech. According to Bloomberg, Taiwan has approved Foxconn Technology Group founder Terry Goh's petition to run for president, clearing the final hurdle to entering the hotly contested race. The billionaire secured more than 900,000 valid signatures in support of his bid, the Central Election Commission announced Tuesday. That far exceeded the roughly 290,000 needed to qualify to be on January's ballot. According to Bloomberg, private equity firms that amassed more than $1.5 trillion of assets in China in just two decades are now struggling to offload once promising investments they were counting on for hefty returns. With public markets in a slump and offering unattractive valuations, buyout firms are exploring private sales. But mounting concerns about the risks of investing in mainland China have left so-called secondary buyers demanding discounts of 30% to more than 60%, according to people familiar with the market. Haircuts in Europe and the US are closer to 15%. According to Yahoo Finance, a debate in Washington about tougher capital requirements for big banks is intensifying as the architects of those new rules prepare to testify before Congress this week. Federal Reserve Vice Chair of Supervision Michael Barr, FDIC Chair Martin Grunberg and Acting OCC Controller Michael Hsu are expected to face tough questions today and tomorrow from mostly Republican members who argue that bigger bank capital buffers proposed by these regulators would curb lending and hurt the economy. According to Reuters, the pound trod water on Tuesday as traders held their fire ahead of U.S. inflation data that could be key in dictating the near-term direction of the dollar against other currencies. British data earlier in the day showed UK workers' wages grew slightly less quickly in the three months to September, but remained close to their record pace. According to Bloomberg, China plans to provide at least 1 trillion yuan of low-cost financing to the nation's urban village renovation and affordable housing programs in its latest effort to shore up the struggling property market, according to people familiar with the matter. The People's Bank of China will inject funds in phases through policy banks with the money ultimately trickling down to households for home purchases, said the people, asking not to be identified discussing a private matter. Officials are considering options including the so-called pledged supplemental lending and special loans, according to the people, adding that government may take the first step as soon as this month. According to Bloomberg, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak faced months of right-wing pressure to take more risks to rescue his flailing Conservative Party. On Monday, he took a gamble that exceeded all expectations, and opened a Tory split that could dog him all the way to a UK general election. Sunak brought back ex-Premier David Cameron as Foreign Secretary in an extraordinary cabinet reshuffle, rehabilitating a predecessor controversial among both centrists and the right for his role in the 2016 Brexit referendum. At the same time, he ousted Home Secretary Suella Braverman, a darling among party populists and key player in Sunak's rise to power last year, after she challenged his authority over pro-Palestinian demonstrations in London. According to Reuters, European stocks gained on Tuesday, led by basic resources as Glencore touched a near two-week high, while investors geared up for a key U.S. inflation report for more clarity on the Federal Reserve's monetary policy outlook. The pan-European stocks 600 added 0.3% by 0930 GMT to touch a near one-month intraday high following a rally in the previous session. According to Reuters, climate change harms Americans physically, mentally and financially, often hitting those who have done the least to cause it, including black people facing floods in the South and minorities enduring searing heat in cities, a federal report said on Tuesday. More than a dozen U.S. agencies and about 500 scientists produced the National Climate Assessment, meant to crystallize the top science on the problem and communicate it to wide audiences. According to Bloomberg, the floods, heat waves, storms and fires fed by global warming are getting worse across the U.S. and will pose increasing danger to Americans unless greenhouse gas emissions are cut sharply and swiftly. The tools to do that are available today and are being adopted by communities nationwide although not quickly enough to avert the crisis, according to a major government report released Tuesday. Called the Fifth National Climate Assessment, the report is the authoritative, definitive assessment of how our country is doing on climate change, Arati Prabhakar, 
the director of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, said ahead of its release. According to Reuters, the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation has struggled to stop a hyper-aggressive cybercrime gang that's been tormenting corporate America over the last two years, according to nine cybersecurity responders, digital crime experts and victims. For more than six months, the FBI has known the identities of at least a dozen members tied to the hacking group responsible for the devastating September break-ins at casino operators MGM Resorts International and Caesars Entertainment, according to four people familiar with the investigation. According to Reuters, the Eurozone economy contracted marginally quarter-on-quarter quarter in the third quarter, a new estimate confirmed on Tuesday underlining expectations of a technical recession if the fourth quarter turns out equally weak, but employment still rose. The European Union's statistics office Eurostat confirmed its estimate from October 31 that gross domestic product in the 20 countries sharing the euro fell 0.1% quarter-on-quarter in the July to September period for a 0.1% year-on-year rise. According to Reuters, a draft of Germany's next budget would double military aid to Ukraine to 8 billion euros in 2024 while also spending more to make buildings more energy efficient and shield industry from high electricity prices. Chancellor Olaf Scholz's coalition has readied the draft budget at a time when Europe's biggest economy could be on the brink of another recession. Industrial production is falling and interest rates remain at a record high 4%. According to Reuters, Monetary policymakers may need to take more forceful action than otherwise to keep inflation expectations anchored when it is unclear how long high inflation might persist, Federal Reserve Vice Chair Philip Jefferson said on Tuesday. Jefferson did not describe his economic outlook or his specific policy path preference in his remarks, prepared for delivery to a research conference in Zurich, Switzerland. According to Bloomberg, Germany's investor outlook improved for a fourth month signaling hope that Europe's biggest economy may be stabilizing as inflation retreats. An expectations index by the ZEW Institute rose to 9.8 in November from minus 1.1 in October, better than economists had predicted in a Bloomberg survey. A measure of current conditions was little changed at minus 79.8. According to Reuters, Catalant will delay its quarterly filing with the U.S. securities regulator due to a goodwill impairment charge of about $700 million related to acquisitions in the company's consumer health and biomodalities unit, the company said late Monday. The contract drug manufacturer, whose annual results were delayed several times this year to account for production snags, said it will report preliminary first quarter results on Wednesday. According to Reuters, the U.S. drive to develop sustainable aviation fuel using ethanol could be slowed because of growing opposition to proposed pipelines that would curb greenhouse gas emissions from ethanol plants by capturing carbon dioxide and carrying it away to other states for storage. Ethanol industry players say the developments raise questions about future growth for U.S. producers of the biofuel, including Poet, Valero and others, who have been banking on proposed carbon capture and storage pipeline projects across the heartland. According to Reuters, bonuses for investment bankers advising companies on mergers and acquisitions are expected to drop by 15% to 25% this year from 2022, according to a study by Johnson Associates, a compensation consultant in New York. Commercial and retail bankers at regional banks will receive bonuses that are 10% to 20% lower than the previous year, the report showed. According to Reuters, the German cartel office said on Tuesday it had opened an investigation into Coca-Cola Euro-Pacific Partners Deutschland over its pricing practices in the country. There were indications that Coca-Cola had possibly restricted the opportunities of other companies to compete due to the structure of terms offered to German retailers, in particular the rebate structure, cartel office president Andreas Munt said in a statement. According to Reuters, U.S. small business sentiment fell for a third consecutive month in October, signaling inflation and labor difficulties could be having a prolonged effect on business earnings, according to a report published on Tuesday. A National Federation of Independent Business Index fell to 90.7 in October from September's 90.8. The fall keeps the index below its 50-year average of 98 for the 22nd straight month as the net share of businesses reporting higher profits fell 8 points from September to a net negative 32%. According to Reuters, Home Depot posted a smaller-than-expected decline in quarterly same-store sales on Tuesday, 
as a switch to small-scale projects and repair work by customers cushioned a slowdown in demand for big-ticket items that has hammered the industry. Shares of the company rose more than 2% in pre-market trading. According to Reuters, home improvements retailer Kingfisher, home to the BQ and Castorama brands, has launched what it says is the sector's first artificial intelligence-powered assistant to support customers with do-it-yourself projects. Seeking cost savings and revenue gains, more retailers are using AI to boost personalized shopping experiences for consumers. According to Reuters, U.S. authorities are likely to retaliate against the Dutch government's decision to cut flights at Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport, probably limiting slots for Dutch airline KLM at U.S. airports, airline lobby group IATA said on Tuesday. This decision is significantly more damaging than people have estimated, International Air Transport Association head Willie Walsh said at an IATA conference in Amsterdam. According to Reuters, Telecom Italia's planned sale of its fixed-line network to U.S. fund KKR boosts the prospects of creating a national grid operator under state control, Italy's industry minister said on Tuesday. Prospectively, I think this, the deal, will enhance the creation of a national grid operator under public control, in full respect of the EU competition law, Minister Adolfo Urso said during an event in Rome. The 19 billion euro deal is backed by the administration of Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney, which authorized the Treasury to spend up to 2.2 billion euros to take a 20% stake in the network. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields will fall in coming months, though not as sharply as forecast previously, according to bond strategists polled by Reuters, who said for a fourth month running in even greater numbers that the 10-year note yield had peaked. Those yield forecast upgrades came after news earlier this month of a blowout third quarter for the U.S. economy and signs from Federal Reserve officials they will not be cutting the federal funds rate anytime soon. According to Reuters, yields in eurozone government bonds and U.S. Treasuries edged lower on Tuesday as investors awaited U.S. inflation data, which could affect the Federal Reserve policy outlook. Analysts said euro-area borrowing costs would keep tracking U.S. yields, while remarks from European central bank officials lowering expectations for rate cuts offset the impact of a bleak economic outlook in the bloc. According to Reuters, strong sales growth at Huawei helped power an 11% rise in China's total smartphone shipments in October, data from research firm CounterPoint showed on Tuesday, indicating signs of recovery in its lagging mobile market. Huawei was a major contributor to the average year-on-year -year growth in the first four weeks of October with its sales surging 83%, a note from the firm showed. According to Reuters, Brazilian cosmetics maker Natura County said on Tuesday it has signed a binding agreement to sell subsidiary The Body Shop to private investor Aurelius Group in a deal with an enterprise value of £207 million. Natura said the agreement includes a potential earnout of £90 million, adding that both the sale price and the earnout would be paid in up to five years after closing of the transaction. According to Reuters, U.S. stock index futures edged higher on Tuesday as investors awaited a key inflation reading to gauge the Federal Reserve's monetary policy path. After enjoying strong gains on Friday, the main stock indexes stalled on Monday as investors waited for consumer prices data to assess if the U.S. central bank was nearly done increasing borrowing costs. According to Reuters, Chevron's deal to buy Hess will unlock $15 billion worth of tax benefits that had once been relegated to the accounting dustbin, as the combined company takes advantage of Hess's past losses to cut future payments, according to the company and tax experts. The tax shield is a little-known advantage to Chevron's mega-takeover of Hess struck last month. The tax benefits are expected to provide the number two U.S. oil and gas producer hundreds of millions of dollars in extra annual cash flow over the next several years. According to Reuters, Chile's central bank said on Tuesday its board considered cutting its benchmark interest rate by either 50 or 75 basis points at its October meeting, but decided for the smaller cut as more clarity was necessary. According to the minutes of its October 26 meeting, all board members agreed it was necessary to continue with the cycle of cuts, but this time around it was advisable to do so at a somewhat slower speed. According to Bloomberg, C Limited swung back to a loss in the third quarter, hit by flagging consumption and intensifying competition from Alibaba and TikTok on its home turf. 
The stock fell 11% in pre-market trading in New York after the company posted a net loss of $149 million, compared with a profit of $322 million the previous quarter. Southeast Asia's largest internet firm reported a 4.9% rise in sales from a year earlier to $3.3 billion, versus the average estimate of $3.2 billion. According to Reuters, Nigeria's central bank will pull back from direct fiscal interventions and take more limited advisory roles in support of the government's economic growth agenda, Governor Olayemi Cardozo said on Tuesday. The bank's current approach blurred the lines between monetary and fiscal policy, undermining its ability to effectively manage inflation and foreign reserves, Cardozo said in an emailed speech. According to Reuters, Egypt discussed with India's ambassador to Egypt the possibility of entering Indian financial markets, Egypt's finance ministry said in a statement on Tuesday. The two sides discussed ways to encourage the use of national currencies to settle payments, in a meeting between Egyptian finance minister Mohamed al maiti and ambassador Shri Ajit Gupta, the statement said. According to Reuters, Germany's core network for hydrogen fuel will extend over 9,700 kilometers and cost around 20 billion euros by 2032, the chairman of transmission system operators FNB Gas said on Tuesday, as Berlin bets on the fuel for decarbonization. The core network connecting ports, industry, storage facilities and power plants, including 60% from existing natural gas pipelines, will be privately financed, FNB Gas Chairman Thomas Gossman told a news conference presenting the network's plans with Economy Minister Robert Habeck. According to Reuters, Adobe's $20 billion bid for cloud-based designer platform Figma is set to face an EU antitrust warning in the coming days, three people familiar with the matter said, a move that would ratchet up pressure on the Photoshop maker to offer remedies. Tech deals around the world have recently attracted tougher antitrust regulatory scrutiny amid fears that some bigger companies may be acquiring rival startups to shut them down or boost their market power. According to Reuters, Britain's Rolls-Royce said on Tuesday it was taking steps to improve the durability of its Trent XWB-97 jet engines but denied a suggestion from one of the industry's most influential leaders that the Airbus A351000 engine was defective. Chief Customer Officer Ewan McDonald acknowledged that the company's largest engine faced challenges in climates like Dubai, where Emirates has held off ordering the A351000. According to Reuters, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz backed the European Central Bank's vigilant stance on inflation, saying that tackling price increases was among the central bank's most important tasks. Fighting inflation is one of the central bank's most important tasks for our common currency, Scholz said at a joint press conference in Berlin with the Greek Prime Minister, responding to a question on the inflationary burden weighing on both countries. According to Reuters, Five weeks into Israel's war with Palestinian militant group Hamas, Israelis are spending less but a recovery may have begun after a steep drop at the start of the conflict, the Bank of Israel said on Tuesday. The central bank said that since the war's outbreak, credit card spending, a key indicator of consumer expenditures that is more than half of economic output, is down 9% from its forecast level, but off a low of 20% after the first three weeks. According to Reuters, Insider co-founder Henry Blodgett is stepping down as the CEO of the publication that he helped create more than 15 years ago, the company said on Tuesday and named President Barbara Pung to the top job. The company will also change its name back to Business Insider as part of Pung's strategy to improve the brand positioning of the business and tech news publication. According to Bloomberg, Grab Holdings Limited, President Ming Ma is leaving the Southeast Asian ride hailing and food delivery company the second top executive to step down in the past six months. Ma, 46, is leaving at the end of April to, to devote more time to family matters, in the U.S. and other interests, the company said in a statement. He'll work on corporate development activities until his departure. According to Reuters, consumers can expect some relief from food inflation next year, with the price of key staples such as sugar, coffee, corn and soybeans set to ease as supplies adjust higher in response to three years of soaring prices, Rabobank said in a report. The specialist food and agribusiness bank said food demand will nonetheless remain weak as consumers continue to deal with economic challenges, including high overall inflation and interest rates. According to Reuters, 
Ethiopian Airlines on Tuesday placed an order for Boeing 737-8 MAX narrow-body jets, nearly five years after the fatal 2019 MAX aircraft crash that led to the grounding of the global fleet. In March 2019, an Ethiopian Airlines 737 MAX plane crashed shortly after takeoff from Ethiopia's capital Addis Ababa, killing all 157 passengers and crew on board. The accident followed a Lion Air 737 MAX crash in Indonesia's Java Sea five months earlier which killed all 189 people on board. According to Reuters, Kyiv and Warsaw again failed to reach an agreement to stop a week-long Polish truckers' protest at Ukraine's border, a Ukrainian official said on Tuesday. Polish drivers have been blocking roads to three crossings, in what they call a response to government inaction over a loss of business to foreign competitors since Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. According to Bloomberg, Nvidia Corp. shares are poised to extend gains for a tenth consecutive session, their longest streak of advances since a record-setting dash in December 2016, as the world's most valuable chipmaker updates its artificial intelligence processor. The Santa Clara, California-based company has climbed about 20% during the course of this latest rally, adding about $200 billion in market value, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. That's as rivals are scrambling to come up with alternatives to challenge its AI dominance. According to Bloomberg, South African attracted nearly $1 billion of orders at Tuesday's weekly auction of government debt, the strongest demand in more than two years, as investors lock in yields seen falling into year-end as inflation slows and fiscal challenges ease. Primary dealers placed orders for 17.3 billion rand of securities at Tuesday's sale, more than four times the 3.9 billion rand on offer and the most since May 2021. According to Bloomberg, Home Depot Inc. narrowed its guidance for a decline in this year's profit and revenue as home improvement demand wanes. Same-store sales, a key measure of retailer performance, will probably drop 3% to 4% this year, the company said Tuesday, trimming one percentage off each side of the range. Earnings per share should fall 9% to 11% compared with a previous forecast of as much as 13%. According to Reuters, U.S. House Speaker Mike Johnson faces a key test on Tuesday as he tries to circumvent opposition by hardliners in his own Republican conference and rely on support from Democrats to pass his plan to avert a government shutdown this weekend. Johnson, who had little senior congressional leadership experience before being elected speaker less than three weeks ago, has decided to overcome a hardline roadblock to his two-step continuing resolution, or CR, by bringing the bill directly to the floor through a suspension of House rules. According to Reuters, Brazilian airline Azul on Tuesday cut its forecast for core earnings this year due to a drop in carrying capacity and higher jet fuel price volatility, but said they are set to bounce back in 2024 and rise more than initially expected. Azul said in a securities filing it now forecasts earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization to total about 5.2 billion reais in 2023, down from a previous forecast of some 5.5 billion reais. According to Yahoo Finance, consumer prices rose at slower pace in October as a drop in oil prices dragged down headline inflation, according to the latest data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics released Tuesday morning. The consumer price index rose 0% over last month and 3.2% over the prior year in October, a deceleration from September's 0.4% monthly increase and 3.7% annual gain in prices. According to Reuters, the eurozone appears to be in the middle of another recession but worries about whether definitive growth figures due early next year will have a plus or minus sign in front or missing the bigger picture. The good news is that the 20-nation currency union is set to avoid a deep contraction that could scar firms, households and banks for years. The bad news is that growth is hovering around zero with little out there to fuel a meaningful recovery. According to Reuters, Tech company Yandex's Dutch holding company is considering selling all its Russian assets in one go rather than just a controlling stake, three people close to the matter told Reuters, as parties race to finalize a deal before the end of the year. Yandex, which has been working on a corporate restructuring for months, declined to comment. According to Bloomberg, 
Some of the largest U.S. companies face billions of dollars in additional interest costs and hits to their profit if they refinance their 2024 maturities at current rates, with a third of them lacking the cash to repay upcoming debt. Non-financial companies in the SP500 have a combined $107.7 billion in debt coming due next year, with an average interest rate of 2.8%, according to a CalcBench analysis seen first by Bloomberg News. Refinancing at 5.44% the rate of the one-year Treasury bill in early November would add another $3.09 billion in collective interest expense, the financial research firm said in its analysis. According to Bloomberg, traders are hoping that the planned meeting between President Joe Biden and China's Xi Jinping will provide a sign of thawing relations and boost sentiment for the Asian nation's beaten-down assets. Wednesday's meeting in San Francisco will mark a crucial moment in what is Xi's first visit to the U.S. since 2017, when he met with the then-President Donald Trump. It will also be his first conversation in a year with Biden, who largely kept intact the tariffs Trump imposed on a range of Chinese goods and also championed curbs on China's access to advanced technology. According to Reuters, Amazon.com is adding package tracking and return services for subscription members who use Buy with Prime, ahead of the holiday shopping season when it will face competition from new marketplaces including Shine and TikTok Shop. Buy with Prime, which launched in 2022, gives retailers who are not Amazon merchants fulfillment and delivery through its logistics network. Its newest features aim to pull in fee revenue from shops outside of Amazon.com during the peak holiday season. According to Reuters, U.S. consumer prices were unchanged in October amid lower gasoline prices, and underlying inflation showed signs of slowing, supporting views that the Federal Reserve was probably done raising interest rates. The unchanged reading in the Consumer Price Index reported by the Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics on Tuesday followed a 0.4% rise in September. According to Reuters, Yields on Eurozone government bonds and U.S. Treasuries fell on Tuesday after cooler-than-forecast U.S. inflation data cemented expectations that the Federal Reserve was probably finished with rate hikes. U.S. consumer prices were unchanged in October, the Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics said, while in the 12 months through October, the consumer price index climbed 3.2 percent, down from a 3.7 percent rise in the 12 months through September. According to Reuters, Nigerian President Bola Tinubu met top officials of the Islamic Development Bank to negotiate a multi-billion dollar infrastructure finance facility to help build ports and power plants, his spokesperson said on Tuesday. Tinubu held talks with ISDB Vice President Mansur Mutter late on Monday in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, spokesperson Ajori Ngalel said in a statement. He didn't provide further details of the finance package sought by the Nigerian government. According to Reuters, JBS saw, the Brazil-based meat behemoth, is braced for tough times as low cattle availability squeezes beef margins in the United States, its main market, and management works to return pork business margins to more stable levels in North America. In a discussion with analysts of JBS third quarter results on Tuesday, managers also said they are trying to improve the operating performance of processed foods division Sierra in Brazil which made heavy investments to boost capacity at a time the world faces a global chicken glut and competitors make inroads in certain product categories. According to Reuters, Royal Bank of Canada's U.S. unit, City National Bank, has appointed Chris Dahl as chief financial officer, starting November 27, a spokesperson told Reuters in an email on Tuesday. Dahl joins from Fifth Third Bancorp, where he served as the senior vice president and head of investor relations. He will succeed John Bai, who will stay until the end of the year to support the transition, the statement added. According to Reuters, the main U.S. stock indexes were poised for strong opening gains on Tuesday after cooler-than-expected inflation data boosted expectations that the Federal Reserve was done raising interest rates. Data showed that U.S. consumer prices were unchanged in October amid lower gasoline prices, and underlying inflation showed signs of slowing. According to Bloomberg, U.S. inflation broadly slowed in October, which markets cheered as a strong indication that the Federal Reserve is done hiking interest rates. The so-called core consumer price index, which excludes food and energy costs, increased 0.2% from September, Bureau of Labor Statistics data showed Tuesday. 
Economists favor the core gauge as a better indicator of underlying inflation than the overall CPI. That measure stalled, restrained by cheaper gasoline. According to Reuters, women in the European Union get paid 13% less than men doing the same job on average despite equal pay being part of EU law, the European Commission said on Tuesday. Equal pay for the same work or work of equal value is one of the founding principles of the EU. It was laid down in the Treaty of Rome in 1957, the Commission said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, Treasury yields plunged Tuesday as a slower-than-anticipated pace of consumer price growth last month bolstered the view that the Federal Reserve's most aggressive interest rate hiking cycle in decades is over. The 10-year note's yield fell as much as 19 basis points to 4.45, the lowest level since September 25. Meanwhile, the 30-year bond's yield fell 14 basis points to 4.65 percent. Swap contracts used to hedge future Fed actions marked down the odds of another rate increase to almost nil, shifted the timing of an anticipated cut to June, and priced in an additional quarter-point cut in July. According to Reuters, a New York trial judge has narrowed Warner Brothers Discovery's lawsuit against Paramount Global over the rights to stream, South Park, the animated comedy featuring foul-mouthed children. In a Monday decision, Justice Margaret Chan of the Supreme Court in Manhattan dismissed a claim that Paramount's alleged deceptive practices violated a state consumer protection law. According to Reuters, Britain's Interior Ministry has told food delivery firms Uber Eats, Deliveroo and Just Eat to implement stricter controls to end the practice of unchecked account sharing by their drivers and riders over worries about illegal and underage workers. Food delivery companies make initial checks on those who want to work for them ensuring their age and their legal right to work in Britain. But once approved, the rider can subcontract their accounts to others, who have not been checked. According to Reuters, digital payments firm Nexi Spa is in talks to sell about €800 million Euros of Italian assets to infrastructure fund F2ISGR Spa, Bloomberg News reported on Tuesday. The Italian company is in talks with the fund on a deal for its clearing and digital corporate banking services, Bloomberg said adding the deal was part of the company's plan to focus on core digital payment activities and rationalize its structure. According to Reuters, General Motors has formally registered with Formula One's governing body to provide power units to a proposed Andretti Cadillac team from 2028, the U.S. carmaker announced on Tuesday. The governing FIA has approved an expression of interest from Andretti to enter as an 11th team but Formula One is still considering the application. According to Reuters, most Chinese companies operating in the European Union are feeling a pinch from the bloc's de-risking strategy, but still see more opportunity than challenge in Europe's green and digital transitions, according to a survey published on Tuesday. The survey for the China Chamber of Commerce to the EU, conducted by consultants Roland Berger, gauged the views of 180 Chinese enterprises in the EU, including telecoms and smartphone companies Huawei and ZTE, electric vehicle maker BYD, Costco Shipping and China's largest banks. According to Reuters, the German government on Tuesday said it had decided to backstop Siemens Energy with guarantees worth 7.5 billion euros as part of a deal with other stakeholders to help the company fulfill its order book. According to Reuters, BMW North America on Tuesday said it would expand its electric vehicle charging service, Charge Forward, to 48 states in the U.S., increasing its footprint in the electric mobility sector. The service lets drivers earn cash incentives when they let Charge Forward manage the vehicle through its telematics system to charge at a time when there is less strain on the grid. According to Bloomberg, Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond President Thomas Barkin said he's not convinced inflation is on a clear path toward the central bank's 2% target despite real progress, curbing price pressures in recent months. I'm just not convinced that inflation is on some smooth glide path down to 2%, Barkin said at an event in Westminster, South Carolina following the release of data on Tuesday showing inflation broadly slowed in October. The so-called core consumer price index, which excludes food and energy costs, increased 0.2% from September, a Bureau of Labor Statistics report showed, unchanged from the previous month. According to Bloomberg, Investors turned the most bullish on bonds since the global financial crisis on big conviction that rates will move lower in 2024, 
according to the latest Bank of America Corp. Fund Manager Survey. The monthly survey showed investors were dumping cash to hold the biggest overweight position in bonds since 2009. BOFA's Michael Hartnett said the big change was not the macro outlook, but expectations that inflation and yields will move lower in 2024. According to Reuters, First Quantum has this week started reducing operations at its Cobra Panama mine in the face of escalating protests. The Canadian miner is caught in a perfect storm of environmental, social and governance issues that threatens to derail one of the world's biggest and newest copper mines. According to Reuters, U.S. consumer prices were unchanged in October as Americans paid less for gasoline, and the annual increase in underlying inflation was the smallest in two years, bolstering views that the Federal Reserve was probably done raising interest rates. Though rents continued to rise last month, the pace of increase slowed considerably from September. The softer-than-expected inflation readings reported by the Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics on Tuesday pushed U.S. Treasury yields lower and ignited a rally on the stock market. According to Reuters, Brazilian food processor BRF Sa is optimistic with the outlook for sales during the final quarter of 2023 based on the strength of its well-known brands Sadia and Pertigao, management said on Tuesday, referring the company's main market Brazil. Shares in the firm rose by more than 7% to 13.22 reais at one point in trading but later paired gains to a raise of about 2.8%, as investors see the management's ongoing turnaround plan reflected on results even as the pork and chicken processor posted a third-quarter loss on Monday. According to Yahoo Finance, investors have never been this confident that the path for bond yields is lower, new data from Bank of America showed on Tuesday. BOFA's monthly fund manager survey showed some 80% of respondents see bond yields falling in 2024, the most ever captured by the firm. According to Reuters, Chinese companies are buying up U.S. chipmaking equipment to make advanced semiconductors, despite a raft of new export curbs aimed at thwarting advances in the country's semiconductor industry, a congressional report said on Tuesday. The 741-page annual report, released by the House of Representatives Bipartisan Select Committee on China, takes aim at the Biden administration's October 2022 export curbs, which seek to bar Chinese chipmakers from getting U.S. chipmaking tools if they would be used to manufacture advanced chips at the 14 nanometer node or below. According to Yahoo Finance, shoppers downsizing to smaller projects have chipped away at Home Depot's earnings. The home improvement store reported Q3 earnings on Tuesday morning. Sales are down 3.10% year-over-year, though it wasn't as low as Wall Street's expected 3.31%. According to Reuters, Brazilian airline Azul on Tuesday reduced its forecast for core earnings this year due to slower capacity growth and higher jet fuel price volatility but raised its view on 2024, lifting its Sao Paulo traded shares. Azul, which also reported better than expected third-quarter results in the day, cut its forecast for 2023 earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization to about 5.2 billion reais from some 5.5 billion. According to Reuters, Israel's foreign minister said on Tuesday that United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres was not fit to head the global body, saying he had not done enough to condemn militant group Hamas and was too close to Iran. His comments, made at a press conference inside the UN building in Geneva, represent an intensification of Israel's criticism of the global body in the same week that the latter mourned the killing of more than 100 of its staff in Gaza. According to Reuters, Turkey's new rules to regulate the crypto market are likely to focus on licensing and taxation, sector officials say, as the world's fourth biggest crypto trading country seeks to get off an international financial crime watchdog's gray list. Ankara promised the regulations last month amidst a years-long boom in crypto trading as soaring inflation and a plunging lira currency drives a demand for alternative assets. According to Reuters, the U.S. Justice Department has asked a judge to dismiss the government's prosecution of a United Health Group affiliate accused of unlawfully restricting employee mobility, marking a new setback in the government's push to apply criminal antitrust laws to labor markets. U.S. prosecutors in a filing in Dallas federal court asked U.S. District Judge Sam Lindsay to dismiss charges against Surgical Care Affiliates LLC and a related entity, SCAI Holdings LLC.
According to Reuters, Chevron said on Tuesday that natural gas flows through the East Mediterranean gas pipeline from Israel to Egypt had resumed after a month-long halt due to Israel's war with Hamas militants in Gaza. Chevron Mediterranean Limited can confirm that on November 14, 2023, the natural gas flow through the EMG pipeline resumed, it said in a statement. According to Reuters, Boeing must deliver 70 narrowbody 737s and 14 widebody 787 Dreamliners in November and December to meet its target for 2023, setting the U.S. planemaker up for a sprint over the holiday season. The U.S. planemaker on Tuesday reported delivering 34 jets in October, about half as many as its European rival Airbus, which delivered 71 aircraft. According to Reuters, British Business and Trade Secretary Kemi Badenoch said she will sign a Memorandum of Understanding with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on Tuesday to boost trade and investment with the fourth-largest U.S. state. Badenoch said the Florida deal was Britain's seventh with U.S. states, and Britain was also making progress in talks with the U.S. federal government on a broader trade agreement. According to Bloomberg, the head of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corp., told lawmakers on Tuesday that his agency had launched an investigation into reports of misogynistic culture among bank examiners that prompted women to quit the agency. FDIC chairman Martin Grunberg said the agency had no tolerance for the alleged misconduct in its workplace, which was detailed in a Wall Street Journal article on Monday. The newspaper's investigation found that female examiners left the FDIC after facing what the article described as a sexualized boys' club environment, and because they said they were given fewer opportunities than male colleagues. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden said on Tuesday he is engaged in daily discussions to secure a release of hostages being held by Hamas and he believes it is going to happen. Hang in there, we're coming, Biden said at the White House, when asked by reporters what his message to family members of hostages would be. According to Bloomberg, Power Corp. of Canada, the holding company of Canada's billionaire Desmarais family, increased the estimated value of its Sagard Holdings Alternative Investments Unit after closing a deal to sell a minority stake in it. The sale to Bank of Montreal and Abu Dhabi's Sovereign Wealth Fund, ADQ, helped revalue Power's stake in Sagard to see $1.24 billion, according the company's third-quarter financial statements. That was 28% higher than at the end of June. According to Reuters, Materials science startup Forge Nano is the latest company to plant a stake in North Carolina's burgeoning electric vehicle battery belt, with a planned $165 million factory in 2026, the firm said Tuesday. Colorado-based Forge Nano, which specializes in nano coatings for a variety of applications, said it plans to launch an EV battery business near Raleigh with a new unit called Forge Battery. According to Reuters, the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion project on Tuesday it had been allowed to resume work in a wetland area near Abbotsford, British Columbia, after correcting issues raised by the Canada Energy Regulator. Earlier this month the CER ordered a halt on an 800-meter stretch after inspectors found several environmental and safety-related non-compliances. According to Reuters, Manulife Investment Management, the global wealth and asset management arm of Canada's largest insurer Manulife Financial, has cut 250 jobs globally, a spokesperson for the division said on Tuesday. According to Yahoo Finance, markets loved the October inflation report, with the SP500 surging on news of price changes that were a little softer than economists forecasted. There's good news in the report for everyday consumers, too. Annualized inflation dropped from 3.7% in September to 3.2% in October. And a growing list of things is actually getting cheaper, with year-over-year -year price declines, are deflation. Since inflation surged in 2021, Yahoo Finance has tracked monthly price changes in 28 categories that account for most things people spend their money on. In October, 11 of those categories got cheaper compared with a year earlier. That's the largest number of categories deflating since we started tracking prices two years ago. According to Reuters, U.S. bond giant Pacific Investment Management Company said on Tuesday it favors bonds over other asset classes next year as it expects economic growth to have peaked and that inflation will slow down. Given current valuations and an outlook for challenging economic growth and diminishing inflation, we believe bonds have rarely appeared more compelling than equities, portfolio managers at PIMCO said in an Outlook report.
According to Reuters, a federal judge on Tuesday rejected efforts by major social media companies to dismiss nationwide litigation accusing them of illegally enticing and then addicting millions of children to their platforms, damaging their mental health. U.S. District Judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers in Oakland, California, ruled against Alphabet, which operates Google and YouTube, Meta Platforms, which operates Facebook and Instagram, ByteDance, which operates TikTok, and Snap, which operates Snapchat. According to Reuters, U.S. inflation is cooling at what could prove to be its fastest pace in at least 40 years, if not longer, with only a limited rise in the unemployment rate, Chicago Federal Reserve President Austin Goolsby said on Tuesday. Goolsby, in remarks prepared for delivery to a Detroit Economic Club event, said that unusual feat had never occurred in the U.S. outside of a war and is being driven by a rebound in supply after years of COVID-19-related squeezes a rise in productivity, and well-anchored inflation expectations. According to Reuters, analysts at investment bank UBS have predicted that emerging market assets are likely to have a difficult start to 2024 before picking up and finishing the year with better gains than the major developed economies of the world. The Swiss-based bank's outlook published on Tuesday forecast that M fixed income would return 8 to 10 percent next year, M equities 6 to 8 percent and currencies 1 to 3 percent, although most of the gains would be backloaded. According to Reuters, shares of Fisker Inc. fell by more than 24% to an all-time low on Tuesday after the electric vehicle startup slashed its production targets as it struggles to ramp up deliveries. Fisker expects to produce between 13,000 and 17,000 electric vehicles in 2023, down from its prior projection of 20,000 to 23,000 vehicles, the company said after the closing bell on Monday as it released its third quarter results. According to Reuters, Airbnb said on Tuesday it has acquired Game Planner, I, a 12-person startup, for an undisclosed sum, amid rapid adoption of artificial intelligence that has taken the tech world by storm and pushed many companies to explore its uses. Game Planner, I was co-founded by Adam Chayer, who was also one of the founders of Apple's voice assistant Siri. According to Reuters, British Business and Trade Secretary Kemi Badenoch on Tuesday signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on Tuesday to boost trade and investment with the fourth-largest U.S. state. Badenoch said Britain was also making progress in talks with the U.S. federal government on a broader trade agreement. According to Bloomberg, Sculptor Capital Management Inc.'s shareholder vote on a $720 million buyout bid by Rhythm Capital Corp will proceed on Thursday, virtually ensuring that the deal will be completed. The deal appears on track after a pair of lawsuits failed to derail Rhythm's $12.70 per share bid for the hedge fund. A New York judge on Tuesday declined a request by a group of four former executives to block the vote. Earlier in the day, a separate lawsuit in Delaware brought by a sculptor shareholder was settled. According to Yahoo Finance, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation Chair Martin Grunberg said Tuesday that the FDIC is conducting a third-party review of a report in the Wall Street Journal detailing how sexual harassment and a toxic work environment forced women to leave the regulatory agency. I'm personally disturbed and deeply troubled by this report, Grunberg said during a Senate Banking Committee hearing. According to Reuters, the U.S. Postal Service on Tuesday reported a $6.5 billion net loss for the 12 months ending September 30 with revenue down 0.4% to $78.2 billion as mail volumes continued to fall. The Postal Service, which has been aggressively hiking stamp prices and is in the middle of a 10-year restructuring plan, said results were significantly affected by the impact of inflation on operating expenses. According to Reuters, a benign U.S. inflation report is bolstering the view that the Federal Reserve can bring down consumer prices without hurting the economy, a so-called Goldilocks environment that investors believe will support stocks and bonds. Both asset classes have ripped higher in November following a months-long wobble, fueled by hopes that the Fed was unlikely to deliver any more of the rate increases that have spurred volatility throughout markets since early last year. According to Yahoo Finance, a night of feasting will be easier on the wallet this Thanksgiving, but a few items' prices may still be hard to gobble down. Grocery prices at supermarkets such as Kroger, Albertsons, and others increased slightly in October, up 0.3% month over month, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics' October Consumer Price Index, released Tuesday.
Compared to last year, the cost of food at home rose 2.1%. According to Reuters, hedge fund manager Michael Burry, whose bets against the U.S. housing market before the 2008 financial crisis were chronicled in the movie, The Big Short, in the third quarter added a bearish options position on semiconductors, according to securities fillings released on Tuesday. He also closed out bearish options against the broad SP500 and NASDAQ 100 index, the filings showed. According to Reuters, as Glencore prepares for a long grind to convince Canada of the virtues of the Swiss trader-led consortium's $9 billion bid for tech resources coal unit, investors and lawyers are optimistic about the deal approval despite the government's increased scrutiny of foreign investments. In recent years, Canada has tightened the Investment Canada Act, the main tool the government uses to review inbound deals to ensure transactions are not harmful to national security. According to Reuters, British Business and Trade Secretary Kemi Badenoch plans to attend a meeting of a major trans-Pacific trade pact, which does not include the United States, on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in San Francisco. It will be Britain's first attendance at a meeting of the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership after London signed up to the massive trade bloc in New Zealand in July, a UK official told Reuters. According to Reuters, Workers belonging to the United Auto Workers Union at General Motors Spring Hill plant in Tennessee have voted against a proposed contract with the automaker, the union's vote tracker showed on Tuesday. Of the total votes cast, 68% were against the agreement. According to Reuters, Chelsea Manning, a former U.S. Army analyst and WikiLeaks source, said on Tuesday that technology tools can be more efficient in protecting people's privacy and information than legal or regulatory mechanisms that risk being tampered with. I believe very strongly that there are technical means of protecting information and those are more reliable, Manning told Reuters in an interview during Europe's largest technology conference, the Web Summit, in Lisbon, Portugal. According to Yahoo Finance, more first-time homebuyers returned to the market in the last year but they had to come with bigger wads of cash. Between July 2022 and June 2023, first-time homebuyers made up 32% of all buyers, according to the annual report from the National Association of Realtors Profiling Home Buyers and Sellers using data from 6,817 survey respondents. While that's still down from the two-decade average of 36.6%, it's up from 26% recorded the previous year, which was the lowest in the report's history. According to Reuters, U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping will meet on Wednesday before a summit of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum in San Francisco, seeking to reduce friction in what many see as the world's most dangerous rivalry. The leaders of the world's two largest economies have known each other for over a decade and have shared hours of conversation in six interactions since Biden's January 2021 inauguration. But they have met only once in person since then and she has not visited the United States since 2017 when Donald Trump was president. What issues are they likely to discuss? According to Reuters, Goldman Sachs bosses are considering fatter bonuses to retain star traders and dealmakers this year as the bank looks to win over some who were disappointed by smaller payments in 2022, according to five sources with knowledge of the situation. The bank has been through a dismal year with earnings down 34% in the first nine months of 2023, pressured by tepid dealmaking and write-downs for a consumer business that lost $3 billion in three years. Goldman's weaker year-to-date profit suggests payouts should be flat or lower, said Stephen Bigger, an analyst at Argus Research. According to Reuters, an Oklahoma senator challenged Teamsters President Sean O'Brien to a fight during a Senate hearing on Tuesday rising from his seat, before the committee chair stepped in to fuse the confrontation. The verbal sparring began after Republican Senator Mark Wayne Mullen paraphrased from a June tweet posted by O'Brien about the senator. What a clown, a fraud. Always has been, always will be. Quit the tough guy act in these Senate hearings. You know where to find me. Any place, anytime cowboy. According to Bloomberg, Alphabet Inc.'s Google gives Apple Inc. a 36% share of the revenue earned via advertising from searches in the Safari browser to be the default search engine on Macs, iPhones and iPads, Chief Executive Officer Sundar Pichai confirmed.
Pachai took the witness stand Tuesday in an antitrust trial over the Google Play App Store in San Francisco Federal Court brought by Fortnite maker Epic Games Inc. According to Bloomberg, Citadel founder Ken Griffin said the Federal Reserve risks a hit to its reputation if it cuts interest rates too quickly. The Fed needs to have the message that they will put the inflation genie back in the bottle, Griffin said Tuesday in a wide-ranging interview at his firm's inaugural global macro conference in Miami. If they cut too soon, I think they risk losing credibility around their commitment to a 2% inflation target. According to Yahoo Finance, Chicago Federal Reserve President Austin Goolsby said Tuesday the latest inflation data shows progress on a key measure watched by the central bank, but that the Fed was not yet near its target. We still have a way to go, Goolsby said during a presentation at the Detroit Economic Club. According to Reuters, the CEO of NewScale Power Corp defended its small modular nuclear reactor business on Tuesday, saying work continues in the U.S. and two other countries after the company canceled its first plant at an American government lab, amid rising costs. NewScale said last week it had agreed with a Utah coalition of municipal power systems to cancel the six-reactor, 462-megawatt project, which was to be built at the U.S.-Idaho National Laboratory by 2030. New scale in the Utah Associated Municipal Power System said the cancellation was due to worries about low subscription for the plant's power. According to Yahoo Finance, board meetings are the DMV of business. But actor and entrepreneur Edward Norton is convinced that they don't have to be terrible, and that's what he and his co-founders are working towards with Startup Zec. I think you could say at minimum we're stripping away a lot of that drudgery that makes everybody want to punch themselves in the face when you're anticipating and even going through board meetings, said Norton. According to Reuters, U.S. stocks rose sharply on Tuesday, led by a more than 2% gain in the Nasdaq, as softer-than-expected inflation data supported the view that the Federal Reserve may be done raising interest rates. The rate-sensitive real estate sector was up 5.1%, on track for its biggest daily percentage gain since November 2022, while utilities rose 3.2% and the small-cap Russell 2000 index advanced 4.7%. According to Reuters, embattled Sahara conglomerate chief Sabrata Roy died on Tuesday due to cardiorespiratory arrest, the company said in a statement. Roy was admitted to a hospital in Mumbai on Sunday and died following complications arising from metastatic malignancy, hypertension and diabetes, according to the company. According to Reuters, in federal court on Tuesday, Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai acknowledged that he sometimes marked documents as privileged and never turned off a setting that caused internal chats to automatically delete after one day. Pachai was in court in San Francisco to defend Alphabet's Google from a lawsuit by Epic Games that alleges its App Store policies amount to an illegal monopoly and have caused consumers to pay artificially high prices. According to Bloomberg, here's one reason U.S. stocks are rallying Tuesday, short covering. Goldman Sachs Group Inc.'s basket of the most shorted stocks, which includes names like Beyond Meat Inc. and Maxion Solar Technologies Limited soared as much as 6.8% during the session before pairing some of the gains and is still handily beating the, the SP500 index's roughly 2% rise. That gap indicates some investors are preparing to cover short bets, which tends to push stocks higher, according to Chris Murphy, co-head of derivative strategy at Susquehanna International Group. According to Yahoo Finance, when inflation was headed to a 40-year peak in June of 2022, Americans broadly underestimated how high it would go. But now that inflation is falling, people expect it to be higher than it will probably turn out to be. The latest inflation report shows that price hikes are abruptly cooling, with the annualized inflation rate dropping from 3.7% in September to 3.2% in October. Markets cheered, with stocks soaring on expectations that the Federal Reserve will be able to stop raising interest rates as inflation gets closer to its 2% target. According to Bloomberg, for Meta Platforms Inc. Bulls, the biggest one-day stock wipeout in history is a fading sight in the rearview mirror. The Facebook owner's shares have nearly quadrupled since a low in November last year, which came after a $251 billion crash in February. By one measure, analysts have never been more confident that further gains are ahead. According to Yahoo Finance, Michael Burry, 
who famously shorted subprime mortgages during the 2008 financial crisis, closed his bets against the SP500 in the Nasdaq 100 in the third quarter. But he also found another industry to short, semiconductors. According to Reuters, lithium miner Liven said on Tuesday its proposed $10.6 billion merger with Australia's Alcom had received all the required pre-closing regulatory approvals. The deal is expected to close by January 4 if Alcom shareholders vote in its favour at a December 19 meeting. According to Yahoo Finance, Disney's widely panned live-action film, The Marvels, drew in a dismal $47 million domestically during its opening weekend, the worst performance in the MCU franchise history. What it means? Disney's film struggles will take a lot of time to correct. According to Reuters, several hedge funds expanded their bets on big technology stocks including Amazon, Microsoft and Meta platforms even as these companies stumbled some during the third quarter after having fueled broad market gains this year, new regulatory filings show. Tiger Global Management, a widely watched fund in the investment world, increased its holding of NVIDIA, whose semiconductors back artificial intelligence systems, by 77% during the third quarter. It boosted its bet on Alphabet by 40%, the filings show. According to Bloomberg, the PGA Tour said on Tuesday that it will offer professional golfers direct ownership in an entity being formed through its pending combination with Saudi Arabia's public investment fund and the DP World Tour, according to a memo sent to players by Commissioner Jay Monahan and reviewed by Bloomberg. Tour management has designed a program that would align the interests of our members with the commercial business of the tour via direct equity ownership in PGA Tour Enterprises, Monahan wrote. This would be a unique offering in professional sports, as no other league grants its players, members direct equity ownership in the league's business. According to Reuters, Chilean retailer Falabella on Tuesday reported it had trimmed net losses by 73% in the third quarter, though it remained in the red, hit primarily by a drop in sales at its stores across Latin America. Falabella, which operates department stores, supermarkets, home improvement stores, delivery and financial services, posted a net loss of 4.6 billion pesos for July to September. It reported a revised net loss of 17 billion pesos for the same quarter last year. According to Reuters, Brazilian digital bank Nubank reported surging revenue and profit growth for the third quarter on Tuesday, propelled by a solid expansion of its customer base in Brazil and Mexico. The lender, backed by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, saw its net profit shoot up to $303 million, far above the $7.8 million from a year earlier and beating the estimate of analysts polled by LSEG of $288.2 million. According to Bloomberg, Canada will seek to ensure job protection and uphold environmental standards in reviewing a Glencore PLC-led acquisition of Tech Resources Limited's coal business, said Canadian Finance Minister Christia Freeland. In the deal announced Tuesday, Swiss commodities trader Glencore will pay $6.93 billion for a 77% stake in Tech's coal business, while steelmakers Nippon Steel Corp. and POSCO, which currently own minority stakes in Tech coal mines, will hold the rest. Freeland said during a press conference in Toronto that she spoke with Tech Chief Executive Officer Jonathan Price about the deal, which she called, a serious transaction. According to Reuters, United Health Group Inc. uses an artificial intelligence algorithm that systematically denies elderly patients' claims for extended care such as nursing facility stays, according to a proposed class action lawsuit filed on Tuesday. Family members of two now deceased United Health beneficiaries sued the insurer in federal court in Minnesota, saying they were forced to pay out of pocket for care that doctors said was medically necessary. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets from Jamie McGeever, financial markets columnist. Asian markets open on Wednesday with stocks, risk assets and investor sentiment around the world soaring after cooling U.S. inflation data on Tuesday look to close the door on more rate hikes and pave the way for the fabled economic, soft landing. Some of Tuesday's U.S. market moves were eye-popping, two- and five-year bond yields plunged more than 20 basis points, the Nasdaq rose more than 2 percent, the Russell 2000 index rose 5 percent for its best day in a year, the dollar fell 1.5 percent for its worst day in a year, and the Aussie and New Zealand dollars both leapt 2%. According to Reuters, 
Charter Communications has agreed to pay $25 million to settle U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission charges related to unauthorized stock buybacks, the regulator said on Tuesday. From 2017 to 2021, Charter used a provision that changed the total dollar amounts available to buy back stock and the timings of the buybacks after the plans took effect, the SEC said in a statement. Those provisions, which the SEC found the company used in nine separate pre-approved trading programs over those four years, ran afoul of the agency's rules for such plans. According to Reuters, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration said on Tuesday it had sent a warning letter to Amazon.com related to sale of seven unapproved eyedrops on the company's e-commerce platform. In the letter dated November 13, FDA said Amazon was selling eyedrops which have not been recognized as safe and effective for providing temporary relief from eye symptoms such as excessive watery discharge, redness, burning, or pink eye. According to Bloomberg, Kathy Wood said that deflation is already underway in the U.S. across industries and will force the Federal Reserve to kick off a big interest rate cutting cycle. The Federal Reserve has overdone it, we're going to see a lot more deflation going forward, the head of ARK Investment Management told Bloomberg TV Tuesday. If we're right, and they've gone way too far, they'll have to cut fairly significantly. According to Reuters, Glencore's deal to buy Tech Resources steelmaking coal unit shows how cheap fossil fuels can be a lucrative option for companies, for a decade or two at least, even as they are phased out in favor of renewable energy. Western companies may be loath to search for new sources of coal or build new mines, but investors say coal still has a powerful role to play in the coming years since it can be used to feed the needs of the global shift to cleaner energy. Demand for coal, driven by Asia, remains strong, lifting prices. According to Bloomberg, Citadel founder Ken Griffin says his new home of Miami could eventually unseat New York's as the world's financial center. We'll see how big Wall Street South becomes, Griffin said in an interview Tuesday with Bloomberg News at the Citadel Securities Global Macro Conference in Miami. We're on Brickell Bay, and maybe in 50 years it will be Brickell Bay North how we refer to New York in finance. According to Reuters, Exxon Mobil has yet to decide which lithium filtration technology it will deploy as part of its aggressive plans to become one of the world's top producers of the metal used to make electric vehicle batteries, an executive said on Tuesday. On Monday, the oil giant unveiled its long-awaited lithium strategy and said it aims to filter the ultralight metal from reservoirs about 10,000 feet beneath the U.S. state of Arkansas. Reuters first reported the news last weekend. According to Yahoo Finance, the House of Representatives passed a bill that appears likely to keep the government open through the holiday season while simultaneously ensuring that spending fights quickly resume just after New Year's Day. The final vote tally was 336 to 95 with scores of lawmakers from both parties voting in the affirmative. The 32-page plan was announced over the weekend by House Speaker Mike Johnson and now heads to the Senate where both Democrats and Republicans there have expressed openness to getting it passed. According to Bloomberg, stocks in Asia are set to follow a surge on Wall Street after an unexpected inflation slowdown bolstered bets the Federal Reserve's aggressive hiking cycle is over. Treasury yields plunged and the dollar slumped. Futures pointed to strong opens for share markets in Japan, Hong Kong and Australia, after the SP500 rose nearly 2%, the most since April. Tesla Inc. led gains in megacaps and Nvidia Corp. rallied for a tenth straight session. Five-year yields plunged more than 20 basis points and the dollar fell 1.2 percent, its biggest drop in a year. According to Reuters, after months of steering clear of China, global asset managers and hedge funds say they are seeing tentative signs of a recovery on the mainland and value in the country's depressed stock markets. While foreign inflows only point to a tepid commitment from these funds so far, the rhetoric is changing as asset managers point to volatility in U.S. stocks and sudden policy impetus in China as reasons to return to the country. According to Reuters, Chevron Corp. said it is evaluating options for around 70,000 net acres of land in East Texas's Haynesville Shale Formation after pausing development earlier this year, with sources saying a full sale is one option under consideration. The move would be a small first step by the energy major which is seeking to offload assets worth up to $15 billion over the next five years following its recent multi-billion dollar acquisitions of more than 700,000 acres in U.S. shale assets. 
According to Reuters, Canoe on Tuesday slashed spending plans for the second half of the year amid a market slowdown for electric vehicle sales and forecast a smaller core loss in a tight funding environment. The EV maker expects capital expenditure of $30 million to $40 million in the second half of 2023, compared with its prior forecast range of $70 million to $100 million. According to Reuters, Wells Fargo has let go of less than 50 bankers from its corporate and investment banking unit as part of year-end pruning, a source familiar with the matter said on Tuesday. Top U.S. banks have flagged even more potential layoffs to save costs, especially if the economy remains under pressure from high interest rates and geopolitical tensions, threatening to derail a budding rebound in investment banking. According to Reuters, Drugmaker Malincrot said on Tuesday it has emerged from bankruptcy and reduced its total funded debt by about $1.9 billion. Malincrot, which won court approval for its bankruptcy plan last month, said it is moving ahead with ample liquidity to execute its strategic priorities. According to Reuters, some big investors showed increased appetite for weight loss drug makers in the third quarter, piling into shares of Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk amid growing demand for their product securities filings showed on Tuesday. Shares of both companies have soared this year as Novo Nordisk's Wegovi and Ozempic and Eli Lilly's Monjaro and Zepbound have been shown to help control blood sugar and dramatically lower weight. According to Reuters, Renault will try on Wednesday to fire up doubtful investors ahead of a planned market listing of its electric vehicle unit Ampere, a key plank of CEO Luca De Mio's revamp of the French automaker. De Mio has targeted a valuation of 8 to 10 billion euros for the initial public offering of Ampere, which has already been delayed once and is now slated for spring 2024. According to Bloomberg, Japan's economy shrank over the summer, pointing to the fragility of the country's recovery in the face of uncertainties including currency weakness, prolonged inflation and a cloudy outlook overseas. Gross domestic product contracted at an annualized pace of 2.1% in the third quarter largely on the back of falling business spending and higher imports that dragged on the economy, the cabinet office reported Wednesday. The contraction was deeper than economists' estimate of a 0.4% shrinkage. According to Reuters, Goldman Sachs chief executive officer David Solomon and his predecessor gave career advice to about 4,000 analysts as junior bankers pitched for grants to be given to charity on Tuesday. Solomon interviewed former CEO Lloyd Blackfein who handed over the reins in 2018, for an audience of junior employees and senior partners that drew laughter and smiles in the auditorium at its New York headquarters. According to Reuters, Grupo Sura, Colombia's largest investment company, posted on Tuesday a year-on-year 22% dip in third-quarter net profit, following a series of divestments earlier this year which hit the company's bottom line in the short term. Net profit for the company, which operates in more than 10 countries via holdings in financial services, foodstuffs, cement, energy and infrastructure, as well as investment firms, totaled 310.5 billion pesos in the quarter. According to Reuters, state-sponsored cybergroups and hackers have stepped up their assault on Australia's critical infrastructure, businesses and homes, a government report released on Wednesday showed, with one attack happening every six minutes. Australia has seen a spike in cyber intrusions, prompting the government in February to set up an agency to help coordinate responses to hacks. Earlier this week, the government released some details of its proposed cyber laws that would force companies to report all ransomware incidents. According to Reuters, the Israeli military said it was carrying out an operation against Palestinian Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip's Al Shifa hospital on Wednesday and urged all members of the group in the hospital to surrender. Less than an hour earlier, around 1 a.m. local time, a Gaza Health Ministry spokesman said Israel had told officials in the enclave that it would raid the Shifa hospital complex in the coming minutes. According to Reuters, Trian Fund Management said in a regulatory filing on Tuesday that it owns 3.6 million shares in insurer Allstate Corp and had raised its stake in Walt Disney Co. by 412%, to own 32.8 million shares. Reuters reported exclusively last month that activist investor Nelson Peltz's Trian built the Allstate Corp stake at a time insurers are struggling to cope with the fallout of natural disasters such as the Maui wildfire in Hawaii. According to Bloomberg, 
The US dollar tumbled by the most in a year after soft inflation data led traders to ramp up bets the Federal Reserve will start cutting interest rates by mid-2024, sending Treasury yields plunging. A Bloomberg gauge of the dollar tumbled as much as 1.3 percent, the largest such drop since November 2022, following a report that showed headline and core inflation in October slowing more than economists had forecast. The euro climbed as much 1.8 percent to 1.0887, the biggest intraday move in a year and highest mark since August, while the yen jumped more than 1 percent to top the 150 per dollar level. According to Bloomberg, U.S. House lawmakers overcame partisan animosity Tuesday to pass a temporary government funding bill that greatly lowers the risk of a shutdown even as it delays fights over Ukraine aid, border policies and deep cuts to federal programs. Democrats bailed out newly elected Speaker Mike Johnson, a Republican whose plan drew opposition from hardliners in his party because it doesn't cut government spending or change border policies. According to Reuters, the dollar stuttered at broadly lower levels on Wednesday after slumping overnight as a surprisingly softer U.S. inflation reading bolstered bets that the Federal Reserve has reached the end of its monetary tightening cycle. The sell-off in the dollar drove a rally for many of its peer currencies, with the euro sitting just below an over two-month high hit on Tuesday. According to Reuters, China's industrial output grew 4.6 percent in October year-on-year, -year, speeding from 4.5 percent in September while retail sales growth beat expectations, an encouraging sign for an economy still showing significant pockets of weakness despite a flurry of support measures. The data on output released on Wednesday by the National Bureau of Statistics came above expectations for a 4.4% increase in a Reuters poll of analysts. It also marked the strongest growth since April. According to Reuters, Japan's economy contracted in July to September snapping two straight quarters of expansion on soft consumption and exports, complicating the central bank's efforts to gradually phase out its massive monetary stimulus amid rising inflation. The data suggests stubbornly high inflation is taking a toll on household spending, and adding to the pain for manufacturers from slowing global demand including in China. According to Reuters, Mexican real estate investment trust Fibra nearshoring experts and technology, are Fibra next, plans to raise up to 15 billion pesos in its initial public offering, according to a filing with the country's main stock exchange on Tuesday. Fibra Next, created by parent trust Fibra Uno last month to take advantage of the nearshoring trend, plans to issue some 277.8 million real estate trust stock certificates in the offering, scheduled for November 28, according to the document dated Tuesday. According to Reuters, boasting a booming share price, Salesforce attracted more investor cash during the third quarter even as one of the software company's early public critics further cut its stake, according to regulatory filings. Sachem Head Capital Management increased its stake in Salesforce by 33% during the third quarter while Farallon Capital Management upped its holding by 30% to own 2.5 million shares on September 30, the filings show. According to Bloomberg, Investors in Dalian Wanda Group Co's mall unit have turned down an initial proposal by the Chinese conglomerate to delay the repayment of 30 billion yuan plus interest due by year end, according to people familiar with the matter. Wanda proposed repaying investors in Zhuhai Wanda Commercial Management Group Company via installments over four years, while offering a more than 20% stake in the unit as collateral, the people said, asking not to be identified discussing private information. According to Reuters, Japanese automotive supplier Denso aims to increase its revenue in electrification to 1.2 trillion yen by the 2025 business year and 1.7 trillion yen by the turn of the decade, the company said on Wednesday. The parts maker raised its 2025 revenue target by 20% from last year due to steady sales of inverters, thermal management and power supply systems expand as well as the tailwind from a weak yen, Chief Financial Officer Yasushi Matsui told investors and media during a briefing. According to Reuters, property sales by floor area in China fell 6.8% year-on-year in January to October, compared with a 7.5% slide in the first nine months of 2023, suggesting China's property sector is yet to emerge from its slump. Property investment in the first 10 months of 2023 fell 9.3% from a year earlier, after dropping 9.1% in January to September, according to data from the National Bureau of Statistics released on Wednesday. 
According to Reuters, European firms, urgently, need China to give clearer definitions of key terms in its cross-border data transfer rules, a European business lobby group said on Wednesday, warning that firms also stood to waste millions of euros storing non-sensitive data in China. The European Chamber of Commerce in China called on authorities to provide precise definitions for both important data and personal information, as outlined in their rules, and also urged that a proposed relaxation of certain aspects of regulations announced in September be finalized as soon as possible. According to Reuters, Asian stocks leapt while the dollar was nursing its heaviest losses in a year on Wednesday as steady U.S. inflation figures boosted investor confidence that the Federal Reserve was done hiking interest rates and may start cutting early next year. U.S. headline consumer prices were flat in October, against expectations for a 0.1% rise. Core CPI, at 0.2%, also came in below a forecast of 0.3%. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average jumped 2% on Wednesday topping the 33,000 psychological level for the first time in nearly two months, amid strong corporate earnings and bets for a more dovish U.S. Federal Reserve. The Nikkei rallied 1.97% to 33,341.56 by the midday break, with 147 of its 225 components advancing versus 76 that fell, with two flat. According to Bloomberg, Chinese equities are set to outperform Indian peers next year as their battered valuations suggest significant upside potential once sentiment turns, according to UBS Group AG. Stocks in China have currently priced in lots of negatives, making them poised for a sharp rebound when catalysts arrive, said Sunil Tirumalai, UBS, global emerging market strategist. Meanwhile, earnings-based valuations for Indian shares are already at fairly extreme levels. According to Reuters, the United States and China will revive a bilateral working group on climate and work together on issues like methane, plastic pollution and energy transition, they said in a joint statement on Wednesday following talks this month. The two biggest greenhouse gas emitters said they support a declaration by G20 leaders to triple global renewable energy capacity by 2030 and promise to work together to curb forest loss and plastic pollution. According to Bloomberg, China's economic activity was mixed in October as consumer spending and industrial output picked up, while investment growth slowed on an ongoing property crisis that has dampened the recovery's outlook. Retail sales climbed 7.6% from a year earlier, the National Bureau of Statistics said Wednesday, better than estimates, though it compared to a particularly weak month in 2022 when spending contracted amid pandemic restrictions and outbreaks. Industrial production rose 4.6% from a year earlier higher than the consensus forecast of a 4.5% increase. According to Reuters, Germany's constitutional court is to rule on Wednesday on the legality of the coalition government's 2021 decision to reallocate 60 billion euros of unused debt from the pandemic era to its climate and transformation fund. This will be a key ruling as it may set a precedent for Germany's fiscal responses in future crises, while it could also trigger tensions in the coalition in a key week for budget negotiations. According to Reuters, China will release data on youth employment in a timely manner, Lu Aihua, spokesperson for the National Bureau of Statistics, said on Wednesday. Lu's comments came after China had suspended publishing its youth jobless data after the reading hit a record high of 21.3% in June. According to Reuters, the next generation of the Toyota Camry, the best-selling sedan in the U.S. market, will come with only a gas-electric hybrid powertrain the boldest move yet by the Japanese automaker to push hybrid technology into the heart of the U.S. market. The 2025 Camry will combine a 2.5-liter gasoline engine with an electric drive system tuned to deliver more power in both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive versions of the car, Toyota said. According to Bloomberg, China injected cash into the banking system with one-year policy loans for a 12th straight month, as funding demand will rise to bolster economic growth. The People's Bank of China offered 1.45 trillion yuan of cash through its medium-term lending facility, 600 billion yuan more than the 850 billion yuan coming due in November. The net injection was the most since 2016. According to Bloomberg, 
Financial results from Tencent Holdings Limited and Alibaba Group Holding Limited will likely test the strength of a $44 billion rally in China's technology sector this month. As the country's major tech firms start reporting third quarter earnings this week, expectations are for Tencent to show strong growth given cost reductions and a friendlier regulatory climate for gaming that also benefits rival NetEase Inc. Alibaba, however, likely continued to suffer from a broader consumption slowdown that pressured competitor JD.com Inc. too. According to Reuters, Berkshire Hathaway said on Tuesday it has shed its holdings in General Motors and Procter Gamble, and trimmed its stake in Amazon.com, as the conglomerate controlled by billionaire Warren Buffett boosted its cash pile to a record $157.2 billion. In a regulatory filing detailing its U.S. listed stock holdings as of September 30, Berkshire reported no holdings in GM and PG, after reporting stakes of $848 million and $48 million in June, and said it reduced its stake in Amazon by 5%. According to Bloomberg, Oil steadied after a short-lived relief rally as the market digested differing views on the supply and demand outlooks, while an industry report pointed to an expansion in U.S. stockpiles. West Texas Intermediate traded near $78 a barrel, while global benchmark Brent was above $82. The International Energy Agency said global oil markets won't be as tight as expected this quarter, with production growth in the U.S. and Brazil beating forecasts. That came after an assessment from OPEC that highlighted robust growth trends and healthy fundamentals.